This is the starting five for the bench warmers. Y'all ready for this? Uh, the Nuggets are your champs. Step up to the drive through order some Nuggets. Uh, the 2023 champions, after 47 seasons of trying, they've got their very first title. I know you're a one New Zealand Warriors fan, uh, Joel Harrison. Yeah. Um, who have never won a premiership in rugby league. I know, I know. And I was looking, I was like, I feel the pain of all the Denver fans 47 as well. years is a long 47. time. I think the Cavs took 45, 46 years to win their first one as well, which was a stat I saw yesterday. Um, but the Warriors, they're on about 29, 30 years, I think, at the moment. So could be testing times where we have to wait 18 more years of my life to be, for a Warriors championship. They did it pretty easily. Uh, you'd have to say, Adam, the best team won across the finals. Oh, I, they definitely looked the, the better team of the lot. There was no one that could touch Joker. And, you know, I, I feel like the Heat are definitely a team that gets – if they get hot, they get extremely hot. But they just couldn't find anything. It's like when they got there, they just had kind of, you know, burnt out of steam by the time they got to the finals, right? Yeah, well, yeah, only five losses in the playoff run for, for the Nuggets. Uh, Joker, Murray, uh, are they the best duo in the league? I mean, you, you, now you have to say on current form, they definitely are. Yeah, well, 100%. I saw yesterday in their post-match press conference thing, they were talking and interviewing Jamal Murray. He's like, if, my, if I didn't get injured, this we would have had two, three already by now. Oh, so, really? Well, he rates himself, which is good. But yeah, he <laughs> yeah. is a great player. Yeah, and, and he had a bit of a tough time too because do you see just recently, I may be jumping the gun here, but you see that he was worried that they were going to cut him last season? Yeah, for when he had the, uh, the big ACL injury. Yeah, right? and, and he he just presumed that he was done. So, he, he you know, he definitely repaid the favor, a favor by them just kind of keeping a bit of faith in him. But he looks so good out there, eh? He looks like you're watching a person who's playing a video game. That, yeah. That's what you get from him. He just <laughs> looks so smooth. And it looks easy. And the team is is pretty young too. Joker twenty eight, uh, Aaron Gordon twenty seven, Murray twenty six, MPJ Michael Porter Jr. twenty four. So, uh, is it the makings of a? They love to say a dynasty, a, a dynasty. dynasty. You know, is it, but it potentially could be. I mean, who's going to load up like a Jamarant gun and try and take him out <laughs> next year? Yeah, well, it, it's scary. Like. I- I don't know. I've seen the heat. They reckon that they're going to be trying to sign a star. They're looking at either Kyrie Irving or Dame Lillard, with two names that have been right. tossed up, which would almost make them a super team, like definitely make them a super team if they got those guys. But yeah, it's like if the Joker's 28, he can probably go for however many years he wants. So well, it's, it's not scary. like he really uh, puts a lot of pressure on his body. You know, <laughs> no. he, he, he looks like he's like a, a half step away from falling over most of the time. But for a big man, he looks like so in control. But it does worry me, though, that if Miami did end up going with Kyrie, you've got a bit of a virus in your side again. And they seem like such a, a team that's based on team morale that it could really cause a problem, eh? Well, Joker is incredible, as you say, Adam. I mean, from like they love that photo of him when he was a chubby kid. They love putting that one out as well. It's drafted 40th uh, in the, the draft. I don't think they played it on ESPN, his pick. They went to a Taco Bell commercial yeah, or something. Yeah. So he was so far down the list. But he is pretty much the best player in the NBA right now. Um, but I thought it was crazy as well. Speaking of him when he was a kid, there was a photo that's been going around when he was five years old in Serbia when he, uh, wearing a Denver Nuggets sweatshirt when he was five years old. Manifest. You've got to yeah. manifest Things, How's that? You know? I mean, the Nuggets wouldn't you wouldn't have thought at that stage would have been the biggest team in the world, but to be wearing that and to be doing what would you be, who would you be playing for if I, you know as a kid if you could manifest? So what were you wearing when you were a kid? What sort of Warriors match? jersey? Warriors, to be honest, yeah. I do actually have some small Vodafone or One New Zealand Warriors jerseys, but like even in the NBA back then, and especially for my generation, everyone was wearing either Lakers or Celtics. That's probably like the two. The two teams that everyone was supporting back then. I was a cricket nerd wearing all, all white stuff yep. with sweatbands and stuff, all beige outfits. So I'd be probably playing for the uh, Black Caps, which I wasn't good enough to do, Adam. Nah, you, you'd have been looking great in that too. <laughs> I, I, I'm a, uh, a person who's followed football my whole life. So I was a tragic Man United supporter and still am. So I wore a lot of that stuff thanks to my cousin who uh, got me into it. Well, who was your favourite? Who was the, who's your, who's your boy back in the day? Uh, I was I was quite left field. I was a huge fan of Paul Skulls, the uh, the little ginger haired midfielder, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and just because he had a massive chart of Paul Skulls scores <laughs> goals. goals. Yeah, That's I right. absolutely love that. Eh? So <laughs> yeah. not, not not what you'd expect, but boy oh boy was he a champ. A joker as well. I mean, incredible player. Seems like a nice guy. I mean, he went and uh, you know uh, went up to all the Heat players first, which I thought was pretty cool. Before he celebrated with his team. Uh, but then his celebrations were kind of odd. Like, they were really kind of unusual. It was almost like he he wasn't that – well, he was – this audio from the parade. He found out there was a parade going on, and it, lo- lo- it looked like he wanted to be anywhere but at the parade. What you are feeling right now, and if you're looking forward to a parade coming up in Denver. When is parade? When is parade? Thursday. No. 
I need to go home. <laughs> <laughs> It's like he's had a big night out and he's like, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble. I need to get home sort of thing. Yeah, because he wears his wedding ring on his shoe. He'll probably wear his uh, championship ring on his shoe as well, I imagine, uh, after this. But he just seemed like he wanted to go home. Yeah, the best comment I saw, I, I would love to claim it as my own comment, but it was someone saying, Jokic looks like the type of guy that he, he just left his, the stove on at his house or something. He needs to get <laughs> home. He just doesn't want to do anything else. Like It was a really weird way of celebrating. He didn't really like he really wanted to pick up the MVP trophy. Yeah, and, and like he just was standing 15 meters back he I feel like he doesn't like the attention um I don't know it was weird he gave his finals MVP to the coach as well so like there's a photo of them and he's not even the best player in the team is like not even in the finals photo sort of thing it's well, weird it's one of the cool things about him though he is uh, he's an amazing player but he's also quite selfless like he loves setting up other people he doesn't really like I mean he will get 40 point game Adam but he doesn't always like to get those sort of games he'd rather just pass it and get assists no, but, and that's probably what really helped out in that team because uh, you know, the first few games, it could have been anybody's game, you know, like Aaron Gordon had a huge game and, and it wasn't really uh, put on him. Like, I feel like it was put a lot more on Jimmy Butler that it had to be him. He needed to show up. But for Joker, it wasn't. Um, I'm a huge fan of Joker, even just in the way of, I, you just have a feeling after the way he didn't celebrate just then that he is absolutely going to blow out the summer, eh? He's going to be like, all right, guys, I've got your ring. Um, I'm going to come back in worse shape than normal, and I'm just going to absolutely blow out. I'm going to ride my horses, drink heaps of beer, and I'm going to come back, and he's probably going to win it again, actually. Well, mm. yeah. I mean, it seems like now he was very unlucky not to get MVP of the whole season, MVP of the finals. His brothers, too. I love, uh, love his brothers. See him um, holding uh, Mike Malone, the coach in the year, and sort yeah, of, you yeah. know, like he's, they're like a couple of heavies, but they're they're awesome. Uh, about the MVP thing, do you think that's why he was a little bit dark about getting the finals MVP? The fact that he he could have felt like he was robbed yeah. in the season MVP, and he's like, oh, you know, it's, it's a bit of an afterthought. What do you, what do you reckon? Oh, yeah, I reckon well, it was between him and Joel Embiid, obviously. Yeah, and I mean, Embiid had a pretty good season yeah. up, until, up until the finals. And the thing is, the, it's the MVP is purely based on regular season performances as well. And and like he Embiid, his numbers were incredible. And he did have a great, a great uh yeah, normal season, his postseason, obviously horrendous. And he's probably um he's probably sitting there still jealous of uh <laughs> yeah. of, of the Joker. But yeah, I, I think uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Embiid actually probably did deserve MVP. Now I've been trying to find a song that's appropriate for each each game, uh, each round, each week, and this one I had to go with the Joker, which is when you uh, old school song. I, I'm not exactly sure who sings it, but it's interesting lyrics. I'm a Joker, I'm a smoker, I'm a midnight Joker. Because it starts off as like some people call me. It's like going through the guys' nicknames. It's like some people call me the Space Cowboy, cool nickname. Some call me the Gangster of Love, cool nickname, and some people call me Maurice, not as cool a nickname. Oh. Um, Maurice more sounds like a cat's name or something. <laughs> does, or maybe his real name. <laughs> I actually know someone with a cat called Morris as well. So um, yeah. There you go. Things I love from the finals, a few things I just wanted to throw out there uh, as well. Uh, I love the merch. I love how quick they bring out the Denver Nuggets championship merch and the fact that some they've also made – you know, probably from, from the mall, from a one-hour mall place. They've made the Miami Champs merch that goes to, without a word of lie, goes to kids in Africa. I wonder if they did actually make Miami merch this year. Like, they're probably just... It was only done in five. They're probably like, we don't yeah. even don't even need to worry about making the heat merch for uh, for the finals. I like that. And I like the goggles they wear, Adam, when they put on the uh, the, the, the champagne and they spray that everywhere. Oh, it always looks so humorous, eh? Especially because I, I saw even in the post, did you see how, I think it was Jamal Murray was sat down and Joker's just walked over top of him and just poured a full oh, beer. Oh, I think it was KCP. KCP. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, think, it was. And yeah. he just poured a full beer all over his face. I think we got that audio. We'll have a, yeah, but let's see, he's just sitting there. In each other, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's really nice uh, speaking. Now it's my turn. Good job. Joker, so he's trying to wrap everyone up. Like, he's like, I need to get home. I need to get home. I don't want to go to a stupid parade. I don't want an MVP trophy. I need to get home. But uh, sounds like he's got to say, like pulling the thumbs up, like good job, good job. <laughs> yeah. One of the most humiliating, hum humiliating things of my uh, social sporting career was when we lost uh, a social touch final on a Thursday night and the other team was celebrating and they all had um, ski goggles on as well. Oh, it was Yeah. What, it was, for champagne? Yeah. Was, I, for I don't know social what sport? It, they all pulled out. There was like five of them pulled out the, the ski masks after we lost and uh, that was a, it was a dark day in the social sport career. What kind of grade are we talking here? It was just like a 
it, it was social? a very, it was social. Yeah, it was social. It was a very social Thursday night competition down at Odeki. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a tough one to swallow. Do you reckon again like the merch they have the uh, the goggles ready to go? Like have they got Miami got their goggles just in case, or are they like a champagne and goggles supplier for the NBA? I think they'd probably have them. Like just ready to go. Got yeah, my goggles just yeah. ready to but go. But there would be like merchandise people, especially in the NBA. They'd be like all the ski brands would be like, "You, you gotta wear our goggles today." Yeah, because yeah, they, they would have seen a lot of people just get absolutely smashed by it in their eyes. <laughs> they're like really struggling, and um, it just would make sense. I reckon they've got like a little a little stash in the room just waiting for a day, surely, and they just like rip open the box, <laughs> good to go, and there they are. Uh, I love the other thing as well, where they go up, players go up to them, and they sort of cup their hand around their ear and they whisper stuff at the end of the game. Yep. So no no mics. I like to think they're saying, you're a piece of shit or something like that, you know, but uh, but it's probably all favourable stuff that they don't want to hear. I'm sure it is. But I, I do like how they've kind of cottoned on to the fact that there's so many microphones and so many cameras. Even It's so hard to have a private moment. Yeah, well, it really is, especially because I think uh, Kevin Love was the one doing a lot of that mm. after the game, eh? and he's probably like, I know you got me. My legs, I'm so old, I can barely jump. <laughs> yeah. You, so we're like, where's that school you're talking about in Denver for uh, the good stuff? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going on a bender. <laughs> yeah, where, where, where's that number we were talking about earlier? Uh, yeah, so well done to the Nuggets. We know when you look back now, though, a pretty memorable, memorable season. I mean, the Heat, uh, we can't forget about them. Uh, an improbable run going from, well, just scraping through in the play-ins to, uh, to the finals. They had a pretty, a pretty good run. They kind of felt like they just ran out of steam at the end, but great season for them in the end. I think, like, regardless of what happened in the finals, it's incredible that the eighth seed made it all the way. Bet the Bucks, bet the Celtics, bet another great team. Oh, the the Knicks as well. Like three huge series wins as well. And uh, yeah, it was a shame they came up shortly. But I think, look, as uh, the Heat Nation, we can move forward being proud. And uh, Heat and six, you were saying last week. Heat and <laughs> sorry, six. I, don't, uh, I was saying Nuggets and five. I'm always, always saying that. But yeah, I think hopefully we don't lose too many players because I saw this. Four like big names: Gabe Vincent, Max Drew, someone, and two others who who actually had really good uh, like playoffs that uh, on uh, free agency as well. So some players lose. are gonna get paid right now. And yeah, that, that's it, right? They have one absolute breakout as well, and and they it's, it's, to be fair, they kind of deserve that, right? Because underdogs all the time, and then they finally show out, and they they kind of should be awarded for it, eh? And uh, it'd be a nice little payday for a few of them, right? Uh, some some wild stuff that happened uh, throughout the season. I'll just reflect on these uh, quickly. Jar Morant in the gun and saying he was fine in the West as well. Pat Bev coming onto the onto the court with a camera to show the ref. I thought it was quite funny. Kyrie being Kyrie, the nets are imploding. Dylan Brooks fighting with everyone on the game and the crowd. LeBron got the scoring title. Thomas Bryant was like, pass me the ball. Just remember that as well. I thought Thomas Bryant was an interesting one. How he went to the Nuggets for more. Yeah. He went to the Nuggets for more game time from the Lakers and oh, I think he was played really well for the Lakers, but didn't didn't play it was sort of third in the rotation behind uh well, Jordan be, and uh, DJ right yeah, yeah. DJ played a little bit I don't know if you guys saw yesterday there was an amazing thing where um Green Jeff Green got absolutely stood up by Bam he um he's crossed him over like two feet away from it mm. and just gone and jammed it and then two seconds later DeAndre Jordan's on the floor and DeAndre <laughs> Jordan's just been made to look silly as well it was like the perfect <laughs> perfect thing but um Good on Brian. He's got yeah. himself a ring. Oh, I, I, I saw him celebrating like an absolute champion. Oh, yeah, you can't videos. you can't take that away from anyone. And yeah. players play their you know their whole lives and never get a ring. It's going to be interesting the free agency and and you know heading into the, this next all the rumors. You know Fred Van Beet, uh, you know Chris Paul, you know Dame Lillard. What teams they're going to end up? And amazing uh, time for people that are good with Photoshop skills because they Photoshop so many singlets on players. You know, especially with how good the AI, the generative. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is that how you say it probably? Yeah, I think it is. Um, what you can do now by just typing a few words in. So you don't actually have to be good at it. You just have to be able to type oh, so what you, you want. Could you type Chris Paul Lakers? Yeah, well, well yeah, as, as long as you have, you can even um, do things now where you can see the face of someone and you could get it to recreate what it thinks the background would be as well. So it can go, you literally just are typing a phrase. So you could just have him in a shirt. You could be like, hey, I want him to be in this jersey. And it looks almost flawless. Uh-huh. Well, any ideas you're thinking? What are you thinking? Chris Paul, Dame Lillard, going to make any big calls? Kyrie Irving? I saw somebody saying that uh, the Trailblazers uh, are willing to trade Anthony Simons and their third round, or their third pick, sorry, who is looking like could potentially be someone, Scoot Henderson. Yeah, um, he's, he's what, the rumoured, right? Trade two, two of those guys, so two great players, for um, to, to like try get some good players around Dame Lillard and just try to promise him 
that they're going to do better. But I, don't, I have no idea what's going to happen there. Let's talk of, uh, I was reading rumours, and there's lots of rumours. Someone like Chris Paul could end up, you know, somewhere at the Celtics, you know, controlling the play yeah. there. Or could he uh, tag in for James Harden at the 76ers? I mean, the teams that could do with someone to, to run the play. I definitely think someone like the Celtics could really help, uh, you know, use the help of Chris Paul. Just like an older head, there's enough, there's enough legs in that team that he would actually they could use a floor general, especially in those moments where you've got a few guys that are good for a bit of a brain explosion and they just need a man, how old would he be now? Like mid thirties? I think he's late. I think he's yeah, 38. Yeah. I Almost think he's 39. Towards, yeah. yeah. LeBron's yeah. age, his vintage, right? Yeah, I think so, he's older than LeBron yeah, as well. Oh, wow. Like so, dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, there'd, there'd be a few. And then uh, to back that uh, behind that as well, there's a lot of changing coaches. So it'd be interesting yeah. to see once all the coaches kind of get uh, rearranged and there's a few assistants getting uh, head jobs as well. Uh, what they want to do. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. See what I did there? Yeah, yeah. See what I did there? Walk straight into that. Yeah. Um, I'm glad we're all adults. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a good thing Joel Harris and Pants Man didn't bring it up. Yeah, no, of course, but but you know, like they, they might want to uh, put it, you know, put their mark on a team as well. So there could be a few late trades. Well, Chris Ball to the uh, Spurs was another one as well that was getting a bit of, a bit of heat as well. You know, uh, team him up with Wemby. Yeah, know, that, that could work, and um, it's pretty exciting. Uh, the draft is next week as well. Speaking of Wemby, like. Uh, all eyes on him next week. Imagine if the Spurs just pull a wild card and don't go for old Wimby. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure they won't. But <laughs> but I guess anything anything is possible in the words of Kevin Garnett. Um, there's actually a bit of late mail just come in as well for this season. We've had a change for uh, the Pants Man of the Year. Has actually it's not me. So I've actually lost this award. Oh really? Uh, Zion Williamson. He's come in with a late oh, entry and yeah. he's won it. He's done it. Last week, Zion Williamson was uh, was going crazy over over Twitter. Yeah, well, it sounded like he was caught in some sort of tryst, uh, you know, sort of three 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 way situation. Well, not not all at the same time, but he had a his baby mama, and then yeah. they had another relationship, and that was all playing out over social media, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he pretty much announced that he's having a baby with uh, his his partner, and a then, big gender reveal. I think they had a big thing. Spent a lot of money on it. I, I heard. Bear in mind, he's only twenty two as well. So I feel like a lot of people probably want Zion Williamson's DNA to have like these incredible wonder kids and stuff. And then um, there was this lady you were talking to me about quite a lot, that adult oh, film star, Mariah, Mariah Mills, I think her <laughs> no, name was. Very quick on the trigger yeah, with the name there, yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. We'll yeah. just go, yeah, you, you can look her up yourself. I'll just, <laughs> whatever you do with her, not my business. But um, so she was pretty much coming out and saying like, I let you spit in my mouth last week. You're a piece of shit. Like you didn't tell me oh, this. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was like quite graphic. And then she keeps going on and she reckons that he was paying her to come out and like live in New Orleans with him as well, and it's, it's got messy, and they've aired all their dirty laundry on Twitter. Yeah, and young and young dudes with a lot of money. I imagine it's quite you know Ja Morant, Zion, yeah. same year. You know those <laughs> one and two in the draft, both have had uh, some personal things going on. So you hope they can kind of sort that out and get some sort of experience around them to kind of show the way. Because I mean, I mean, imagine it'd be wild if you're in that position, earning millions. That's what Mariah Milk. She's trying to give Zion a bit of experience that he's looking for, you know? <laughs> oh, she, she, yeah. Stay out of it, Harrison. Stay <laughs> you, you, you could definitely see there was a age gap there anyway, because, um, it was quite weird seeing someone use Snapchat to send messages. I don't know if you saw a few yeah. of his messages backwards and forth. And he was saying, you know, I'm a free single man, allegedly. Um, and it, all this, this kind of stuff. Was it look like his actual, was it, it was from it, him? It, it, lo it looked like, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want to point fingers here, but it looked like it could have been him. We'll go with that. But, <laughs> but why are you using Snapchat out of all the things that you could use? It's an interesting one. Like what do celebrities actually use to message people on? Because anyone can go and make an account and call themselves Iron Williamson with like an emoji yeah. next to it. And get a tick nowadays yeah. as well too. So it is it is an interesting one. I guess like the only legit thing, Instagram, because there's a verification there, but people no, but you can pay for fabricate. The, I yeah. think you pay for the tick now, if I remember correctly, from Elon. Like you just have to... Uh, you don't, yeah, have, to, you do, you right? don't have to be accepted because he fired basically all the staff so no one can verify. You pay um, a fee. I kind of feel sorry for those celebrities that go on those dating apps. Is it Raya or whatever it is? Oh, and then they yes. get called out by the people. They're like, oh, Matthew Perry messaged me or whatever. It's like, well, yeah, he's on the app. You know, it's a celebrity, you know. Like, well, he's a human too, yeah, right? exactly. The he's not, like, it's the point of this app, you know. It's, uh, but anyway, that's what happens. Let's go to Stat Bunker. <laughs> Throw some stats uh, your way, uh, Ish Smith. I thought it was pretty cool. 13 teams, 13 years, finally run, won a ring for the Nuggets. Pretty impressive. 13 teams over 13 years is a hell of an achievement. You'd hope but, you didn't have much of a fa uh, much uh, like a family with young kids or something, because okay? that would be really hectic for a young family, yeah, wouldn't I you know, reckon, just, just moving around. To, sorry, guys. School's uh, in another state uh, next year. Uh, oh, you're probably reading this off the sheet, so you guys, but five different champs in five years in the NBA. 
Well, can you can you name them off the top of your head? Last five. Top of my head, I'll go. Go, go this year. Um, nuggets. Yeah, good. Good. <laughs> last, last year. Last year, Warriors. Yeah. Year before, was it the Lakers? No, just year before uh, Bucks. Yep. Yeah. Then, then Lakers. Yeah. And then Celtics. No, no. Ra- Raptors. Raptors. It was yeah. the Raptors, Raptors. Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi. Yeah. Yeah. Was, it, was that when he had that really famous corner uh, three pointer to win the game against the 76ers? Was That's that the year that they won? Yeah. That was it. Sort of rattled around. They had Jimmy Butler was playing for the 76ers back then, I think. Yeah, hey, the one that they got away. Kind of made their th- made their bed with uh, Ben Simmons, and that didn't work out so well. Um, uh, Nikola Jokic, the lowest drafted NBA player to ever win the Finals MVP. Yeah, that's interesting. I think 41 it was, um, which is interesting. You look at that class of people ahead of him yeah. as well. I think there were some good players. I mean, Aaron Gordon was in that class. There was a few up as well. But obviously, it's always such a – I mean, it is a lottery, but it is a lottery to sort of put your money on – you know, a player and then think that they're going to be amazing and sometimes they're not. And Bede yeah. was in the same draft. I'm just looking here. He was number three and that one. Aaron Gordon, number four as well. Marcus Smart, Julius Randle. So some, some great players. I think that I was reading something about the Nuggets and they were like, well, they took a chance on him, but a lot of people kind of wrote Joker off because he was big, but he didn't look that athletic, you know, like strength and all that sort of stuff. He's kind of like an unusual physique, but he's an amazing, amazing player and you can't like, you know, judge him by his looks. Yeah, just to get the, the I don't have any credit I don't know how I'm trying to prove him this wrong, but um, Anthony Bennett was the bust I was talking about, not Andrew Wiggins. And he played for the Cavs, right? Yes, yes. He and went, then as he, soon as I read that out, I was like, what an idiot. But, and then he went and played, was it in the, in the Chinese or Japanese league or something like that? Yeah, he's um he's down bad. He's Canadian guy as well, so that's how I got the mixed up. Steph had as many threes in the finals as Murray had in the finals, I thought was interesting. But then Murray got a ring, and it didn't matter. It wasn't all about threes, and Murray was incredible. And uh, Udonis from the Heat uh, played uh, eight hours, uh, just under eight hours of game time. For over fourteen million dollars worth of salary since two thousand and sixteen, he's paid only. Uh, but yeah, but he's still just not one of those guys that he have around because he's so experienced and, yep. and he brings that that heat culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um he well, he played in all uh, since two thousand and six. He was in every single finals appearance yeah. for the Heat, which as well, which is yeah, all these young guys. He probably mentored them a lot. Uh, let's head to Ali Oops before we wrap things up with the TAB bet. <laughs> It's the big alley. Ooh, ooh, it's not the one, eh? It's not the one. We'll start things off with the one moment where Joker looked like he was actually enjoying uh, himself after the game, and that's where he had, they had a quite a nice little plunge pool out the back there in the Nugget Stadium at the back of the dressing rooms, and he grabbed uh, Murray and he, he threw him in the plunge pool. Sounds like something's going on. <laughs> Sounds like Joel on his waterbed. <laughs> yeah, as well. So uh, always a risky manoeuvre with cell phones and all sorts and pockets and stuff, but uh, we chucked them in there. And they're big guys. These guys are like really seven-foot units falling into a little pool <laughs> a little as well. Pool. So the head knocks, oh, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. And something else that was a recipe for disaster, you guys uh, probably saw this, Conan, Conor McGregor, uh, UFC fighter. They brought him out for, it was it was sort of a set-up halftime thing at uh, one of the Heat games, uh, and he was going to have a little play fight with the mascot of the Heat, and he had this spray, this cream that he was advertising that if he got, in, uh, got some pain, you sprayed it on, it wasn't going to hurt anymore, so the idea was for him to lightly punch the mascot, and then they were going to spray the stuff on him. Unfortunately, he's a UFC fighter, and he decided to punched the guy pretty hard twice and he ended up in the I think he went to A&E and Mercy <laughs> came in with like the hammer shot to finish him off <laughs> yeah. as well similar to what he did back in like the, yeah, the cage is crazy. And then these people come running and spraying like the stuff on it, like spraying the stuff as the poor guy's knocked out. It could have been a, it would have been a really good advertisement if he did really, really hurt him. He sprayed the stuff on him and then he magically got up. You know, like when you're watching sport and they magically put the uh, the water on you and yeah. stuff. Oh, all the of magic a water. Yeah, the magic water. It's- I've- you think about those things, though. You think about yeah, the protection. We did one uh, years ago on Jono and Ben, where Jono was in a mascot. Uh, so he was in a tackle bag, 
sort of costume. Yes, yes. And so all the players thought it was the Blues at the time. They're like, ah, oh, this is that'll be nice and soft. We could tackle him hard, and they did. And he ended up breaking his collarbone. And I remember Jono moments before going, I don't know about this. Just before we met, I was like, oh, it's a bit late now, <laughs> and, and it was a bit late. And unfortunately, yeah. You know, but they 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 went hard, and that's what happened with Conor McGregor. How did you guys decide who out of the two of you was going in there? Was it a coin flip? I was think it? it was based on a sketch each week. I think whoever got the most uh, the least votes on a sketch. Ah. Uh, so I think that was that particular week. So it could have easily been me, but I, I remember that the day it was pretty. It was yeah, it was quite a full on traumatic day for for poor John O and and for the TV show. But I remember getting a pep talk from John Kewen. So, so John Kewen was nice. That was a you know because he was the coach of the Blues at the time. Going, no, what you need to do, Ben? He's going to be in shock. He's going to. I was like, oh, John Kewen's giving me a pep. Wouldn't talk. you laughing? Isn't there footage of you laughing at him on TV as well? well oh, no, John O, not not John Kewen. Oh no, no. Well, at the start we're like, oh, it's funny, yeah. And then you're like, oh, and he's like, I think I've broken something. <laughs> And then it went serious as it did. And we're like, oh, okay. So, you know, you learn your lessons. <laughs> uh, I've, I've broken my collarbone myself uh, playing touch rugby. I've like dived, landed right on the tip of it, snapped it. And that is a very, very sore injury because – all you can do is wear a sling. Like, yeah. There's nothing you can do about it. And I just remember rolling around and always rolling over it in the night. Like It kind of just heals itself eventually, right? Eventually, but, yeah. yeah. It's just a very, very niggly thing. You can't even hide it in a cast or anything. So I, I definitely feel for Jono there. Uh, now, the TAB bet, uh, we we made an outlandish one last week, hoping it would end up at, at, at overtime. It didn't work. But I thought we'd... With the NBA finished, uh, there is the Basketball Cup coming up in August. And New Zealand's playing in that as well. Um, the US, USA team, a few players have announced they're going to play for them already. I mean, Brandon Ingram, good player. Jaron Jackson Jr., Anthony Edwards, Halliburton, Austin Reeves, uh, Mikael Bridges, Bobby Portis. So interesting, interesting mix of players so far from uh, from the, uh, the Team America. Uh, but uh, we need to decide who we think is going to win because Team uh, Team America will police. They're only paying a uh, one one dollar fifty three, so not much. So should we go for someone a bit more of a an outsider or maybe one of the European teams like Spain that is actually the number one team in the world? Yeah, because when we talked to Thomas Abercrombie, he was saying that the FIBA rules and like the style of play in FIBA is actually quite different to NBA. That's why these European teams do so well. I think he said smaller court and then smaller three point uh, yeah. circle as well. I think as well, um, and different rules as yep. to how long you can be in the paint and stuff like that. Yeah, too, right? maybe Australia. Though. Australia paying ten bucks. They France like paying ten bucks. Team. Canada twelve bucks. Spain twelve bucks. Serbia. If uh, I don't know if Joker's going to be playing for them. If he is, I mean, they would be pretty incredible at fifteen bucks. Slovenia um, as well, fifteen bucks. And Greece, if they've got Giannis, uh, thirty-four bucks is a is a long a long. Long shot. What are you thinking, Adam? Can we d- just address the elephant in the room? Looking at this USA team, they don't look like a dollar fifty three side. Eh? I feel no, like that I, is. I felt like that was. You know, there's some good players. Oh, but, don't get me wrong, but it's not. You know, Steph Curry, LeBron James. You know, like, yeah, yeah. You, you don't have uh, too many uh, teams like first play there. I definitely feel like we have to. We, we can't pick USA regardless because there's no point there, right? <laughs> no. So who? What who, about Wimby? Is he playing for France? I don't imagine the Spurs will. Want be wanting nah, him to get injured. Th- that'll be the problem, right? Yeah. The boomer. I love the name, the boomers too. That always makes me laugh for the Australian team. How about we we go all in on the boomers? <laughs> the boomers. This, this is quite a controversial thing you're doing here, Joel. The, for the one time, you know, there's a lot of people that hate on Australia. Should we? I'll oh, we'll split it. All right, Joel, you go fifty bucks on the boomers. Yeah. And uh, producer Adam, you go fifty dollars on. Well, the hardest thing here is that I can't split the hundred dollars. Oh, okay. So, so no, actually, actually, I'm I'm happy to go with the boomers. We're going to have Joel put out the video. He's going to yeah. be the face of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Don't worry. I get slandered regardless whatever I put on there. Every time I'm saying the hate are going to win, someone comments this guy. This idiot doesn't know basketball. No, we don't. We, we don't <laughs> yeah. know basketball. Oh, guys, never yeah. claimed it did. Can I just say the best thing about one of the last videos that we put out for the TAB? Um, I saw you, and it was a heat bed as well, and every single comment underneath it just said, up the wires, wires 13 plus. <laughs> like, no one was looking at it. Oh, I think, I actually think some, who, I think Joe Jury, the webmaster, I think he said, he got, he said, comment the NRL bet as well. And I was, I was, I was wondering that, but I was like, maybe they just, yeah. And, and it's straight away, it's like Joel saying, oh, so, but no, no, let's, let, okay, let's the go. the boomers. All right, the boomers, all in on the boomers. That's, uh, I mean, they've got a pretty good uh, team. They've got a lot of NBA experience as well, but okay, 10 bucks on the boomers. They can't work the Skype video, but they can, uh, the boomers. <laughs> Boomers, they love the chase and they love winning the hopefully the world champs. I reckon before we go, let's just get a really early prediction in before next year. You know, this, this oh, before bef- next year, Jeez, <laughs> at the just- moment, who do you reckon is going to win the NBA in twenty twenty 
four it will be. It's hard but with not seeing how, you know, those those teams sort of uh, end up, the rosters sort of fill out, you know, with those players that are moving around. Like where's Kyrie going to go? Where's Chris yeah. Paul going to go? At the moment, it's hard to see anyone beating the Nuggets after just watching the Nuggets and then going, well, players will want to probably play for the – if you're on a vet minimum contract or like, you'll probably want to end up at the Nuggets as well. So they'll probably have an even better team next year. Are you asking this so you can keep receipts? Is this what we're yeah. doing here? Are you are you well, keeping this audio? <laughs> is this is this what's going on? I'm, I'm happy to put a, a name out there. Okay, you uh, go, you go. I'm so, not going to say Nuggets because that's boring. Okay. Yeah, no, it is boring. I'm yeah. going to go first up. I'm going to go the Bucks because of the way that Giannis – finished the season. He was not happy about went on. He, you know, everyone was trying to say he's a failure and all that kind of stuff. And he really came out and fought for his pride. And I'm just going to feel like he's going to come out with a chip on his back and we're going to see the beast. So I'm going the Bucks. Oh, look, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Lakers, LeBron decides to come back. <laughs> he comes back. He somehow manages to make Kyrie work at a mid-level exemption or something, or he does something with the salary. You get, you get Kyrie, you get LeBron, you get one final. It's the last dance. And I probably it's probably not going to happen, but I'll go Lakers. Why not? Have you seen there's a bit of a conspiracy that they reckon there's a chance that he was going to sit out next year because there's an extra spot about to come up in the league and they reckon there's a play for him to pick up this Las Vegas spot? Oh, LeBron. Yeah, to, to like to like have the team and then like create the team afterwards. It is a bit of a bit of a theory, but it was very interesting to see the other day. There was a few people talking about it. Um, oh, so people. either way, it could be interesting. And uh, Joel Harrison? Oh, look, just, just, for, just for a bit of a long shot. I'll go the Heat. No, you know, I, I, picked, I, I had a, I had a, a very educated guest last year when I picked them, and it almost worked. But this year, Jimmy Butler, he wants that ring before he retires. And uh, Butler, Bam, and Dame Lillard, how's that? that? Well, if, if that is the case, I'll bloody put the house on it as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm excited for next year. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a good break and. Hopefully Wemby gets drafted second. Uh, well, uh, thank you so much for everyone that's uh, listened to the bench warmers throughout the season. It's been a lot of fun talking absolute rubbish and talking a little bit of basketball as well. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Joel, for joining me today. And we'll catch you soon on the ACC. Have a great off-season. Listener.